All right, everyone. Welcome to Grain Prep for Mushroom Cultivation. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the five main steps, uh, which are understanding the role of grain in mushroom cultivation, the preparation process, sterilization process, inoculation, and finally, incubation. All right, so it's typically 12 to 24 hours to soak grain for mushroom cultivation. I usually go around the 24 hour mark. So for soaking, I just use a five gallon Home Depot bucket, but you know, any five gallon pail will work or smaller depending on how much grain you're trying to do at once. Um, here, I've got about six and a half pounds of grain. Now I've got this Home Depot bucket here, it has half inch holes drilled all the way around in the bottom. And you can get these um, mesh netting on Amazon. You get packs of, I think it was five. It's meant for paint straining. Uh, I'll leave a link in description for this. And then it, it's meant to fit over a five gallon, inside a five gallon pail. Uh, and then I just tape around the edge to hold it there. I use that for draining. Then I like to just give it a rinse. So typically grains are used for mushroom cultivation because they hold moisture well and um, mycelium needs, mycelium which is the base for, for mushroom growth needs to have moisture to grow. So sterilized grains work great. First you soak them, you give them a wash, sterilize, put them in jars or bags. And then you pressure cook, depending on the size of the bags and the jars, anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. In addition to them holding moisture, they also have nutrients to provide food for the mycelium as it grows. And just to give you an example, you can see the difference between the dry ones and the wet ones. All right, so I've got my pressure cooker here. It's a 23 quart T-fell pressure cooker. Uh, I've got it one third full of water and we're gonna bring that to a boil. When we've got it boiling, we're gonna dump our grain in here and we're gonna boil it for about five or 10 minutes. We do that to get the grains very hot. Um, then we're going to drain out the water and spread the grains out and that'll allow the uh, moisture on the outside of the grains to evaporate very quickly while leaving the inside of the grain hydrated. Um, you don't want to put wet grain into jars or bags for pressure cooking. You'll end up with too much moisture in there. All right, so we're going to wait uh, till that comes to a boil and we'll dump the grains in there. Don't have a ton of room in my apartment, so I uh, work on my living room table here. So these are just some large plastic tubs about eight inches tall, two foot by three foot or so. So I've got those. I've made out of just some one by two wood and some um, plastic door screen. These trays that just fit over top. Of my buckets. A few minutes later. All right guys, I think we're good here. I'm going to give this a stir and just keep it moving. I don't want the grains, the same grains, just sitting around on the bottom where it's too hot. All right, so we're just going to let that boil for about uh, five to ten minutes. I'm going to set a timer here. All right, so most pressure cookers come with a tray like this that sits in the bottom of it. Actually, it comes with two. Another one that sits at mid-level when you're doing a bunch of jars. So a little trick I use. First, I dump out whatever water is going to come out without a bunch of grain coming with it. Alright, now we just spread our grain.
So after I've dumped them out and any extra water has gone down into the container, I'm typically going to take one, move it to the floor and sit it on some blocks and the other one on the table on some blocks. That way it has free airflow from underneath as well. Right now, there's just a lot of heat and moisture being trapped down in that container and on the underside of all the grains there. So you can tell if your grain is done by taking some grain and putting it on a paper towel or a piece of Kleenex. And if it leaves wet marks, which it's not, but as you can see here, we've got no wet marks. All right, so we've got our green here. It's ready to go. So I've got some 500 milliliter quart jars here, two piece lids, and I've got a piece of micro pour tape over top of the 3 8 diameter hole there. That's how I do my jars. So we're gonna just fill up our jars. We only wanna go about it depends. If you're going to inoculate them with a couple pieces of agar, then you can go a little bit fuller. But if you're going to be inoculating it with some grain transfer from another jar, then you're going to end up too full. So you want to go a little bit less. So about three quarters of the way full. Is. You don't want any water um, and moisture working its way down through the hole and through your microfiber tape making it all wet and dripping down in there so you typically just use a square of tin foil and put it over top like so. Alright, so we're going to turn the stove on high. I've got about a half an inch of water on top of this. Overall, probably about one inch of water in the bottom of the pressure cooker. Alright, so the pressure cooker finished up about an hour ago. Usually I'd leave it sitting here overnight to cool down, but because I made so much grain, I have to do another run. So I'm just going to take them out. Put them into the flower bed. 